Hello lovebirds and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is going to be a special video. I thought of a new recurring feature on this platform where I would discuss icons through the decade. It kind of reminded me of when I went to makeup school and we would study the decade so that we would have a broader reference database in our head for when we were on set and somebody said, you know this icon, I really want to go for that kind of vibe. So that is kind of what I want to do here, but I don't just want to do one 60s look or one 70s look. I want to discuss multiple different styles. And I thought I'd start off with the most well-known icon of the 60s, which is Twiggy. And I'm really excited because it's such an iconic look and there's so much interesting facts about her. So today's video is going to be all about Twiggy. Let's get started. Let's start off with foundation first. I'm going for the It Cosmetics CC Plus Color Correcting Full Coverage Cream. And at the moment, I'm quite tan still, so it's a perfect match for my skin shade. So let's start off with Twiggy's real name, which is kind of nice because the whole thing about her nickname is that she was so stick thin compared to all the icons that came before her. And especially, you know, the icons in the 50s were quite curvy. Look at Marilyn Monroe, for example. And she was stick, stick thin. And her friends used to call her Twigs. And that later on was kind of marketed by her then uh, boyfriend, who was also her hairdresser. And they kind of baptized her to be called Twiggy. So that's where the name comes from. I'm applying my foundation with this Kevin O'Quan little buffing brush, which is just wonderful. It is so tiny that it would fit in my purse, but I always leave it here in the studio because it's one of those go-to brushes that I really like to use on myself. Now keep in mind, this foundation is really, really, really covering but I wanted to go for a full coverage base because that was kind of the way they applied foundation to the skin. It was quite matte, it was quite full coverage. It usually was a little bit paler than the model was in real life, um, but it gave them this kind of look. They also didn't really use highlighters or a lot of blush or contouring. So it was very straightforward. So that's why I'm going for this full coverage foundation. One of the other reasons why I admire Twiggy quite a lot is that she really invented this specific look, made it her own and really rocked it. And now, I mean, we are 54 years down the line and every time we see under eye lashes being drawn on, it's still a twiggy look. And that is incredible for a 16 year old to enter this industry and leave such, such a remarkable stamp on the whole fashion scene. Just going to apply a little bit on the neck area, not much kind of what is left on my hand just to get rid of that typical technique. Also, if your ears are on show, then grab those two. There you go, foundation done. I'm gonna go in with uh, one of my favorite concealers. This is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer, and I'm just going to quickly conceal my under eyes. Now, one of those things that the 60s and Twiggy were really known for was quite powdery matte skin. So I'm going to use the Chanel Poudre Universelle Libre to powder everything off and make sure that we are actually matte. There we go, all mattified. On to the next step. I thought it could be good to do brows first because brows were also quite typical in the 60s. On the one hand, Twiggy usually sculpted her brows quite natural to keep the natural shape going, but on the other hand, the 60s were also quite known for their sculpted brows. So um, I found this recent picture, let me see if I can find it real quick. So I found this picture in which it is very clear where she sculpted her eyebrows and where she kept them quite natural. Now, I also feel like this picture, because it was taken in black and white and the contrast is so high that they accentuated the brows even more so that it would still be visible 
through this entire concept. Now I'm going to take that round shape that she did in this photograph and not put it on as thickly as she did, but kind of to reference her. I'm grabbing onto YSL Couture Brow Slim and I'm going to map mm map out my shape a little bit before I go in with anything else. So let me brush up my brows. You know, I am quite hairy when it comes to the brow area. So on the one hand, I feel like I do have enough space to get that shape in, but I kind of have to ignore my own hair growth and just draw through that. So what I'll do first is I'll brush all the hairs down and try to find that typical shape on the top of my brow. So I'm going to place my arch quite high, etch my way through this shape. It's also quite funny to see that a lot of the 60 shape pointed downwards. So instead of what we do nowadays a lot is where we kind of want that Bella Hadid vibe. In the 60s it was more going down, down, down. So. That's why I'm rounding out this brow and having it point downwards. And then just going into my natural shape. So it's not that strange. I'm going to fill in the gaps a bit here. And then try to not make this point too thick. Are we getting the same vibe? Maybe I should round it out even more. It's funny because this brow is definitely going to end up from our starting point, so it's going to be below that. But it will accentuate the eye shape that we will be creating later on. So we kind of want to till this down. I don't even mind it that much. I quite like it. Okay, let me quickly do the other brow. Obviously, also, what we are not realising today is that the analogue pictures that were taken back in the day would not display as much detail as we see in our content. So, for example, we have such technology that we can... Someone is busy. Nowadays, our technology is so, so advanced that we can literally see every pore in everything we shoot. That was not the case back in the day. And I mean, Twiggy did a lot of um, movie work as well after she ended her modeling career because in total, Twiggy only modeled for five years. She started in 1965-ish. She was born in 1949. She started in 1965, 1966. And then in 1966, she was uh, rewarded with face of the year. I mean, they said she was the epitome of the swinging 60s. That's quite an honor. To make this feel slightly more natural, um, I'm going to zoom you in and show you how I would add a few hair strokes to just get that feeling of having a more natural brow. So. so as of right now, you can clearly see where I went in with the pencil, but I want to make it slightly more natural. So I'm grabbing onto a little bit of aqua color with some setting spray, and I'm just going to add a few brow strokes starting from the place where I added the most unnatural shape, which is the top part and the arch. And then I'll just go down to add a few strokes of hair where there literally isn't any. Yeah, maybe some peach fuzz, but that's about it. And some here because I have some very definable gaps there. That suddenly does look slightly more natural. I can see one very definite gap appearing once I brush my brows back up. Alright, finishing up with a little bit of brow gel. Swipe those ends down so they meet with that little tail. Quite large tail, to be honest. Now it's time to do the eyes. The one thing that I am looking forward to the most. Um, but to do so, we need a good reference picture. Now I'll put it up on screen as well somewhere so that you have a reference throughout this video. Um, but as you can see, those little crease tails go down really far. And as you can see, that whole angle that she's using 
is going down from here right to here. So you kind of want to play around with this look and this vibe of really that typical, let me see if I can zoom even further, that typical twiggy eye. So um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fill in my waterline with a white pencil. So I've got this one by Yves Maquillage and this is the Natural Nourishing Eyeliner in white. And I'm just going to fill in my lower waterline. Now, I'm doing this now because there's so much going on on the lower lash line later on that I kind of want to do it now so I don't have to touch the under eye area after I'm done with the twiggy lashes. So, on to the crease because I feel like that's the most important part of this entire look. So again, what I really like to do is kind of map out where I want certain very prominent features to be. So I'm just going to grab onto a little eyeliner brush. This one is by Tush, it's the number 30, and it has a really nice, nice easy tip. Just going to grab a bit of eyeshadow so I can place that dot in strategic areas. So I wanna go above the iris for the highest part. Okay, so I've mapped out where I want my shape to be. Now, I've got this little eyeliner brush by Charlotte Tilbury. It just says eyeliner, but it is a really nice, tiny detailer brush that we are going to use to map out this shape. Now, for eyeshadow, I've got Carbon by MAC Cosmetics, and it is a single black eyeshadow, and it's one of the best I've got. So I'm going to dip in my brush lightly. I don't want to use too much product when mapping out and then I'm just going to get right to it. Now again, I'm mapping out and it doesn't make sense because my natural hand, my natural instinct says that I need to go a little bit further out. So I'm just going to do that. The inner corner kind of does make more sense. No, it doesn't. Okay, so I'm grabbing onto a dry cotton bud and I'm just going to blend away that excess black that we've got here so that I just have the space to alter it. I've still got my concealer brush and I just dab on there just to get rid of any of that redness if it does appear. I kind of want it to be a little bit more angular and a little bit more pointed downwards. Now, obviously, we've got this little hollow here, and we want that line to be there. So I'm going to have to alter that, which is fine. That is the thing with these kind of looks. It's, it never goes right the first time. So we kind of optically have to change our natural eye shape to make it look like it's nicely rounded out. All right, once you feel like you've got that right shape in, you can start filling in the rest of that line because if we look at Twiggy's pictures usually, and also if we keep in mind that products weren't the same back then, um, you're gonna notice that it's quite a soft line, but with intensity and with purpose. Um, so if we look back at products, for example, I talked about this with my mom and she was also like, yeah, we didn't have like a liquid eyeliner pen to do really detailed work. We had a cake liner that we used to do our eyeliners. And then we also had this kind of paste that we had to wet, kind of like soap brows now, but we had to wet it, put our spoolie through it, and that would be our mascara. So we need to keep in mind that products weren't the same back then and hence, it changes the way that makeup was done. Um, I'm quickly going to map out the other eye and then start filling in that shape. All right, now that I've mapped out my shape, I'm going to fill in that line and make it more prominent. Now, one little tip that I can give you, sometimes you want a little bit of extra intensity. That's the point where you go in with an eyeliner brush and maybe wet the eyeshadow, but for now, it's just going to be eyeshadow and this detailer brush. 
Also, this takes a bit of time and you need to build up that shape just one step at a time, but it's also so very therapeutic to do. <laughs> I also want you guys to know it's just as nerve-wracking for me to do this as it is for you. And, you know, I'm trying to do this, like, really neatly in one go, but obviously half of the time it really doesn't go that way. Um, so don't beat yourself up if it doesn't go right. That's why we have Q-tips and makeup remover. Now, as you might be able to tell, I'm worrying about the top line of this eye look a little bit more than the bottom line because I'm gonna go in with white eyeshadow afterwards in any case so I can maybe just clean up that lower edge a little bit more with my eyeshadow. Now I can see I've gone down a bit too much on this little line here. So this is one of those really handy cotton buds by Muji that are really nice and thin but not too thin to do this. So I've got the even smaller ones by my kid code that are absolutely perfect for really millimeter stuff. And this is just to fade out the bottom of this line. Also a good tip, if you start to feel like the black is going down the brush a little bit too much, which makes it difficult to do detailer work, just clean it in between with a little bit of brush cleanser and then you'll be able to get going again afterwards. You know, there's so much you can take from looks like these because you could minimalize this entire thing and decide, you know, I wanna do a very simple line above the eye with some paint or with some eyeshadow. And that is kind of what we are seeing now a lot is the graphic eyeliner looks, but it all really stems from the 60s, which is amazing and I think we took some inspiration from the 80s and from the 90s to change up that shape and not have it go down like this um, but it is amazing to see what one person could do in terms of how makeup evolved throughout the decades. Okay so I'm going in with a little bit of Depixum and this is a really nice just pigment in a cream form and it dries up it's waterproof and i'm gonna apply a little bit of this all over the lid to bring it forward i'm grabbing onto a cosette d40 d240 and i'm going to concentrate that white in the center and then work my way out so i start right here because that's where I want the intensity to be. Then I grab onto a tissue, wipe it clean a little bit, and start blending it outwards. I'm nearing that line, but I'm not touching it yet. I think I might go in with a little fluffier lip pencil, for example, or a lip uh, brush just to get that detail work nice and fine. And again, positioning is really just setting yourself up to succeed. So if I need to go in this direction, I'll line myself up to be able to do that, because like this, it will be a little bit more difficult, whilst if I tilt my head this way, it'll be a lot easier. Let me intensify that center just a tiny bit more. Now that we've come so far, I'm gonna go in with a detailer brush, and this is a lip brush number 19 by Tush. Now make sure your lip brushes are really, really spotlessly clean because otherwise it's going to mess up with that white eyeshadow. Um, so I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to scratch all the edges to make sure that it's really nice and filled in. And even just maybe if it's necessary, um, correct some of the mistakes I made before with my black eyeshadow. So yeah, here we go. I've always found it much more easy to scratch a line like that than to just go in and carve something out like most people do with their 
um, uh, cut creases, for example. And obviously, this is somewhere the same kind of technique, but it's just slightly different because I don't want it to be fully covering. So scratching for me is the technique that works best. Now, one very important thing about Twiggy's aligner is that they all lined up for that lower lash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a fine line of eyeliner, a little thicker on the outer corners, and she usually just grabbed it from here to here. I'm just going to finish it up to the inner corner so that we don't have that weird... See, because she had it as well. You see that elongation of the top lid? I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use my Surat Autographique eyeliner and um, not much explanation needed for this. Now, because I want it to have the same feeling as the top of that line, I'm going to grab onto that detailer brush again and I'm just going to buff out that eyeliner. So this is where I'm going to have it end. And then we're going to use this end later on to paint on the lashes. This brings us to our next step. Now I've got these incredible lashes by Sweet Lashes. So I'm going to apply these to the outer corners of my top lid and these to the bottom, but only after we've painted on the lashes. So let me go ahead and put these on before I move on to the lower lid. Now what I love about these, Nikki, that you don't have to cut them to make them fit your eye and I usually prefer just individuals or partly done lashes you guys also know you know I'm not the biggest user of false lashes but if you're gonna do twiggy you're gonna have to do falsies that's just the way it is I mean she used to stack them maybe even three layers of falsies to the top lid and that's just insane, that's got to be so heavy. And then the easiest thing, especially because I'm such a noob when it comes to lashes, um, I usually grab a mirror, put it right underneath my chin, and then I place them on. And it's also easier this way, because this way you can actually place them as close to your natural lashes as possible. I'll be damned. This went really, really well. I'm really surprised. So I'm going to give this a moment to dry up and in the meantime I'm going to paint on the lower lashes. Now one little tip I have for you because it is a little nerve-wracking to go in with a liquid liner and having to get it in one go. Um, I usually grab onto a little bit of uh, gel. Gel? Gel liner? Wow died and came back and I'm gonna go in with the Melt Cosmetics Ultra Matte Liner and I'm just going to place dots and then flick it out with that little paintbrush. So I'm gonna grab onto the Tush number 27 to place the dots and I'm gonna use the Tush number 30 to flick them out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a little dot right here, dot of product and then I'm going to use that brush to flick it out in the right direction. And gel liner obviously is also a little thicker, so it gives you a little bit more opportunity to mold it in the right direction. And because it's such a beautiful matte eyeliner, it will go on very smoothly and softly, and that's exactly the vibe that we want to go with when it comes to Twiggy. And see how beautifully that fades out. It's not like there's a harsh line anywhere, it's just a beautiful, shadowy kind of little lash. And also by doing them one at a time, you're able to space them out just the right amount. There we go. Lashes. Okay, going to do the other side. All right, now that we've painted on our lower lashes, it's time for mascara on the top lashes. I'm using the YSL The Shock Mascara because it packs on volume like nothing else. And I really want to connect the inner lashes to the outer 
lesh additions that we made earlier. I'm just going to go lightly through this end to bind the lashes and the falsies together. Now that we've done the top lashes, I'm also going to apply a little bit of mascara to the lower lash line. To tie this whole look together, I'm going to apply a little bit of blush and I'm using the Jouer Coquette Blush Duo. And these are these beautiful, simple pink shades because if they did apply a little bit of blush. It wasn't too dominant, it was quite light, and we wanted to tie together everything with our lipstick later on. So I'm gonna grab onto that lighter shade with a refer number four, and just apply a hint of blush to the cheeks. But we do wanna keep that skin matte, so don't go for a blush that has a little bit of shimmer in it, because I think that will just kind of ruin it. Now, to get a very typical 60s lip, you want to go for something ultra matte, quite light, and maybe it has a hint of pink in it, but usually it was a very, very beautiful nude shade. So I've got this one. Uh, it's a lip cream in blush by Jouer, and I'm going to apply this all over my lips. Now, one thing that is quite noticeable when you look at all Twiggy photos is that usually she just kept to her natural lip shape. There was no overlining or any foolery going on. So I'm gonna keep it to my natural lip shape. Okay, I went over a little bit. Couldn't help it. Usually happens whenever I apply something with the applicator itself and not with the lip brush, but I am really pleased with the end result. Um, please let me know what you guys thought of this whole process and this whole makeup. If you have any questions about Twiggy or about this makeup, please pop them down below. And I really hope to see you next time. See ya. Bye.